I feel like, for whatever reason, we completely stopped talking about Panay Sewell this season. He got so much attention his rookie season as this sort of generational talent, right, who most people agreed was tackle number one, had great production, also great talent, uh, you know, and then there was obviously the whole, should he, can he play right tackle or can he only play left tackle, all that stuff, the preseason and all that drama, but he had a legitimately great year at right tackle, and we should talk about what he was able to do so effectively. So, going to start off with, you know, hey, not an easy team to block against. Philadelphia, who, you know, went to a Super Bowl in part because of how well they rushed a passer. That was certainly a positive aspect about their game. Where What you're going to see right here is it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one block with a, a linebacker. That's what he's doing. It's a running play, so that's how this works. Worth mentioning, this is not just any linebacker. This is TJ Edwards, a guy who just got a big contract this offseason. So, definitely someone who you know, can make plays. Watch how right when this play begins, you see that uh, Panay Sewell is able to run up very quickly and get into position to block Edwards. Again, part of this is you have to know where the block is going to be. If it was going to be a run to the left side of the screen, well, then this would be a terrible situation. But obviously, Sewell knows all he has to do is make sure that Edwards does not get all the way to the right side of the screen. That's what his job is, and he's doing a good job of it. You see Edwards kind of try to run around him, but at that point, you know, wasn't really going to do too much. Sewell did a great job of getting up to that next level so quickly, and this is one of the things we talked about as such a positive of Sewell coming out of college, is for his size, he does not play like someone who is his, his size. You'd think that he is a lot lighter with how quickly he moves up to that next level, and you certainly saw it in Detroit. You also saw something like this, where again, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one block, but this time it's just against an edge rusher in the passing game. That's what is happening here. Again, it's Philadelphia, so no matter who you're going up against, you're going to have a, a good player going up against you. This time, it is going to be Brandon Graham, uh, the you know former Super Bowl hero, uh, you know who had that uh, strip sack of Tom Brady, of course, so definitely can, can make some plays happen. Watch how when this play begins, you see how Graham is going to almost try to use uh, power right here. He has his right arm uh, kind of on the uh, left side of Sewell. And actually what he's going to do is uh, an, an inside rip move, which you don't see too often. But he's going to try to get his left arm underneath Sewell's left arm uh, and go to the inside. So closer towards the guard and try to get a pressure that way, which kind of makes some sense, right? Goff isn't necessarily the guy that you fully have to worry about potentially getting outside the pocket that way. Plus, there is some space there. You know, the right guard on this play is currently a little bit occupied with another player. So, okay, bit of a clever idea by Graham. Not one I would expect, but, you know, that can fool uh, an offensive lineman potentially, especially a young one like Sewell. However, as you see, Sewell pretty much stays with it the whole way. Eventually, Goff got the ball out, but I think he would have had more time uh, in that area, even if he didn't, because, uh, you know, uh, Sewell did a very good job of that block. And these are the kind of things I thought Sewell was just doing consistently, right? Because that's really what it is at the end of the day with offensive linemen. It's not so much can you make a block. Every offensive lineman can make a block. It's how consistently do you do it, and he does it consistently. Although heading over here, in the running game, it can sometimes be a little bit different. Sometimes it's not necessarily just about can you make a play, but also uh, how well can you make this play? Because you see him going up, uh, it's a double team on Fletcher Cox, but then it's actually the center who's going to go up and he's going to block TJ Edwards on this play. That's how it's going to work. But watch how well Sewell is able to move Cox on this play. I mean, watch him just completely take Cox out of this play, quite frankly. I mean, that is just, you know, uh, that's his power, right? We talk about his speed and his athleticism, but he also has that insane power. And again, these were the kind of things he was doing consistently. This isn't a highlight reel. This is just what he does. Now, I guess maybe if I want to get into critiques, I don't have many, but one I could argue with would be something that's going to be on a very similar play. Uh, so you have him who's going to be uh, also... Uh, a quick side note, I believe I said that uh, he was, uh, I got called a guard a center, sorry about that, uh, on the last play, but I think you know what I meant. Uh, anyways, on this play, it's once again a guard tackle double team, but then, but this time it's actually Sewell who's going to get up to the next level to try and block a linebacker on this play. 
as you see, does a great job working with, against Fletcher Cox as well, but doesn't fully get up to the next level. And this is something I noticed about the Lions in general. It almost seemed like they were constantly more focused on making sure that they did not allow someone to uh, win, you know, win against a double team. And they wanted to make sure they got the defensive lineman out of position more than they cared about the guys getting to the next level. So while I could maybe call it a nitpick, I actually don't even know if this is uh, his assignment on this play. If he was supposed to get up to the next level, uh, because a lot of times on that situation, it is the guard who's supposed to get up to the next level. So while he makes an effort to, I I'm not going to fully sit here and say that that was Sewell's fault. But this is something I just noticed in general with the Lions. They didn't always do this. So again, maybe you could call it a nitpick uh, or a critique. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, I think I'm, I'm kind of uh, grasping at straws trying to nitpick him because there's not a lot to nitpick about him. I mean, honestly, I think that, you know, I can show you as many uh, highlights as I want to, as many blocks one as I want to, but I don't think any of them will do the justice that what you're going to see on this specific play is. Uh, going up one-on-one -on -one against Hassan Reddick. Hey, Hassan Reddick, remember him? The guy who was terrorizing seemingly every single offense in the playoffs on the Eagles run to the Super Bowl? Yeah, that guy. Going up one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, big-time block. What's going to happen? Well, as you see, Reddick basically never even gets a hand on Sewell until the ball is almost coming out of Jared Goff's hands. I mean, he's trying to make moves happen, but almost came in there and just didn't know what to do. And that's a great situation if you're an offensive lineman, if you can make blocks just by your presence and just by the, you know, edge rusher not having a great plan, which again, you could argue is more of a f fault on uh, Hassan Reddick on that play than it is credit to Sewell on that play. But the reason why Reddick made that error is because he knows he's going up against Sewell and he has to have a great pass rush move to make something happen. And he wasn't able to do it on that play because it's really difficult to have a great pass rush move uh, against Panay Sewell because most great pass rush moves still do not beat Panay Sewell. So yeah, I think he's done a lot of really good stuff so far uh, in his career. And I think that he's proven that he was worth the draft pick. Again, there was the whole him versus Jamar Chase. I think both teams are very happy with who they ended up with. I don't think we need to talk about the, you know, again, they don't play each other. It doesn't matter who's actually uh, better or who's worse, but they've both been very good and both been, you know, at uh, one of the better players at their respective positions. And again, it's with the Lions offensive line. That's part of what's so exciting about them heading into next year. And part of why I think they decided to get a running back with pick 12 is because they want to get the most out of this great offensive line. As incredible as Panay Sewell is, uh, he's still probably not even their best uh, offensive lineman. I think Frank Ragnow, uh, their center, is probably still the guy I would say is their best offensive lineman. And maybe you could argue Taylor Decker is better than Sewell, which is crazy because Sewell is like a you know, you could argue as a top 10 tackle in this league. So, and oh yeah, the other two players uh, that are, you know, you're on your roster right now, uh, Graham Glass now and uh, Jonah Jackson. Yeah, things are going pretty well for the Detroit Lions uh, offensive line currently. And Sewell, definitely one of the bigger members of their of their team. And I think that he's been great uh, for them. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Panay Sewell. Those are my thoughts on the Detroit Lions offensive line as a whole. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.